What is going on everybody? This is Dylan with Dylan Talks Tone and today we're going to dive into some soldering stuff. We're going to talk about five soldering tips and I don't mean like these kind of tips. I mean like tips. Uh, what we're going to do today is I have to actually make a couple of Telecaster control harnesses to be shipped out to one of you. You've ordered from the website at Dylan Talks Tone. You ordered a set of uh, Telecaster pickups which I've got the wax heating for those, the coils are already wound, but we need to wind up, or we need to wire up the Telecaster controls. So I figured it would be a cool time uh, to talk about some soldering how-tos. So let's talk first things first. The very first tool that you would need, obviously, is a soldering iron. Now this is tip number one. Get a good one. This is your main tool for soldering, so this means that it would be worth it to buy. A good one. Now that doesn't mean you need to buy an expensive one, but let's talk about a couple of things that won't work. The normal 15 watt soldering iron from Radio Shack, those little stick ones that come in the little cardboards, those probably won't work. Uh, they, when you see globby soldering kind of like this uh, on the inside of a guitar, it's probably because somebody couldn't put enough heat into their work, which also means uh, that they probably did not have, and there's a bunch of other reasons we'll get into in a minute, but they probably didn't have enough heat in their soldering iron, which means they probably had a crappy soldering iron. Now, the other thing you don't want is one of these kind with the trigger, the gun, because those are actually like a big electromagnet, and they can kill pickups. I have seen it happen. Uh, you can work on a guitar, and you have that thing next to your pickups, and it will demagnetize the coils in your, or your, the magnets in your guitar. I have seen this happen. So don't use one of those big trigger ones. Get a proper, usually this is a ceramic heating element that goes on the inside of a sleeve, goes on like that, and you can replace your soldering tips, etc. Now the one that I'm using on my bench right now is a Heiko. Uh, this thing is really killer if you're doing work all the time. My buddy at Runway Audio Cables in Nashville turned me on to this. The way this thing works is when you get yourself onto something big and that soaks up a lot of heat, the soldering iron senses that and it sends more juice to keep your stuff hot, which is pretty sweet. Uh, now this thing is about $110, something like that. If you are more of a hobbyist and you don't want to invest that much money in your soldering iron, um, then this one would be a good one. It's a Weller and they're about 40 bucks. Uh, before I got this one, I used that exact one, that orange one, right there from Amazon for years. I literally used it for years, and actually that's probably the one we use the most when we do our pickup winding classes too, because they're the most attainable and I like people to get to know them. I solder at 700 degrees. It's a little hot for some people, but I'll show you why when we start. And at that temperature on one of those orange wellers, I want to say it's about three and a half on the dial. So I take one of those orange wellers, set it to three and a half on the dial, and boom, I have enough soldering iron and we're ready to go. One more note about equipment. I use eighth inch, I think this is about an eighth inch spade bit on here. So it's like a flat. Uh, let's talk about tip number two, solder. Now this is one of those things that get has a lot of myths and a lot of ridiculousness surrounding it on the internets. Uh, this is Kester 6040 solder. Uh, this one pound spool costs about $30. You can get them in little, um, more manageable, smaller sizes for hobbyists that don't do this very often. And it works pretty good. Now, so this is 6040 tin lead. You can use lead free. I actually have a spool of lead free. I have one client who ships a lot of our pickups in guitars to Europe and Japan, and they can't have lead in their solder. So we have lead free solder. So this is the Kester. Uh, K100 LD lead free solder. Now, when you switch from leaded to lead free, you really need to have two completely different setups. So that's why we have a second handset. This is my lead free handset. So when I solder on the stuff for that particular client, I switch everything over because you don't want to cross contaminate because in case it gets checked. It has to be ROHS compliant, etc. blah, blah, blah. So if you're in a country where you need lead-free solder because of ROHS rules, then you'll need a separate set handset to go from leaded to lead-free. The solder itself, 
people will talk about silver solder, 6337, all these various ratios of tin and lead. It's a bunch of baloney. This is one of those things where in a particular technology, not guitars, some of that stuff can matter. A guitar is not a smart circuit. It's a pretty dumb circuit. It's just a simple LC circuit. And the proportions of electricity, E over IR, that we're looking at here are pretty basic. So don't stress about the type of solder. 6040 is fine. You're not going to get more tuned with silver or any of that kind of stuff. Just use regular 6040 solder. Now, if you'll notice, I use 33, which is pretty thin. And I'll show you why in a minute. I think it keeps your work neater. You just have to have a little faster hand speed, you know. But don't use some bigger, huge plumber grade, huge, thick kind of solder because you'll just make a mess of everything. This has rosin in the core. So this is rosin core 6440 solder. I should have mentioned that. Uh, it self cleans as you solder. Tip number three. Tip number three is keep your work still. When we're soldering, and we'll show you in here in just a minute, it's really important to keep the work still. If it moves around at all, heat transfer will not do what it's supposed to do, and you'll have a cold solder. So a couple of tools that I use for this. When I'm doing stuff where I need three or four, five, six, seven hands, uh, I use this cool thing. It's steel plate with magnets and little bendy things and alligator clips, and it's pretty awesome. If this is really helpful for when you have to solder two wires together and you don't have enough hands. You can put two wires in, a, in these clamps and you can put them next to each other. This thing really helps. Um, I really, really dig this thing. I use it a lot. The most of the time when I'm soldering, I have, I do something else. This, uh, and these aren't for sale, but you can make them yourself. Um, this is just a piece of wood with a slice in it. This serves a couple of purposes for me. When I am assembling humbuckers, I can screw the screws into the bobbins and the screws have some place to go. That's one of the reasons I use this. But then the other reason I use it uh, is when you'll see here in a minute, when we put a Telecaster control plate on here, the knobs sit down in here and it keeps it still for me to solder. So keeping your work still is really, really important. All right. Let's do some soldering, shall we? We've got our control plate for our Telecaster sit here in our little jig that I mentioned to you previously. Let's go ahead and get going. There's one thing I should mention. Uh, there is a safety factor to this as well. You don't really want to be breathing soldering smoke all day long. Uh, at least I don't because I sit here and do this for, you know, a fair amount of time. So. Um, we don't want to breathe solder smoke. So I've got this cheap, it's cheap, this little box with a filter on the front of it and a fan, and it's a solder extractor. It actually pulls the smoke through a filter and it doesn't come out the other side and it works pretty well. It is helpful to have it. I'm not going to turn it on right now because otherwise you will hear it the entire time loud enough to disturb the video. So, all right, let's get into some soldering. Make sure your tip is clean. And uh, let's see, the first thing we're gonna do is let's ground the strap for the volume pot. Done. Let's go ahead and put the capacitor Solder the back side to the pot. See how quick and easy that went? All right, let's go ahead and cut off our leads. I'll give you a little trick. I actually like to use the leftover leads as the wire that goes between the volume pot and the tone. How about that? Conservation for you. Making Greta happy. You notice how these are just touches. Soldering at 700 degrees makes it to where this is literally just touches. 
um, and you might think, oh, you're going to do damage to the back of a pot, uh, but if you're just on it very, very quickly, it will not be any big thing. Now I take the other capacitor leg, and this is what I use for my Telecaster switch jumper. Just bend that on through there like so. Be careful when you're soldering your switch that you don't over solder because you can get solder down into the little dudes in the switch and screw up the switch so you don't want to over solder. Let me just make sure that's good. Perfect. Now we need a wire to go from the switch to the volume pot. Push back pre-tinned wire. Cut this to size. I usually flip this around for this step. shape make it look nice all right now we need to put an output jack on it let's do the ground first closed up the ground tab on the volume so I just heat that push that in there here is the hot flip it down to make it clean And there you go. There is a ready to go drop-in wiring harness for a Telecaster. Basic things here, this is just kind of a conglomeration of little things, tip number four, is don't worry about all of the stupid myths on the internet when it comes to soldering. People are going to look at my soldering and they're going to say, well, you didn't make a mechanical bond. Like, put the thing in, bend the wire around, all that crap. I could pull this right here as much as I want, this is not going to come off, okay? Because when we solder correctly, the solder joint is very, very strong. Um, we don't need to put the wire in and hook it around and make all these problems for ourselves. Hooking the wire around is going to make it very, very not serviceable. The more time you have to spend with the soldering iron on a component, the more likely you are to damage it, as well as uh, trying to get the wire out when it's hooked around. It's just dumb. Don't do it. Just put it in there, and if the solder joint is good, we don't have people hanging on our solder joints here. This is not like, we're, this is not welding. We're not holding up bridges, okay? And that would be my other thing. That's tip number five. Understanding what soldering really is. This is not welding. This is actually a chemical bond. I don't want to get too much into the details here because you can get really into the weeds with it. If you want to know more about this stuff, um, we have a soldering course uh, on Teachable. You can go to dylantoxtone.com, which is just our website, dylantoxtone.com, and scroll down to the bottom, and it will say uh, soldering course. And you can hit the button, and it will take you to a spot where you can uh, take a soldering course. And it's a bunch of video, and it really breaks it down. We take some really good zoomed-in shots, look at good solder joints, teach you how to uh, solder together basically this what I just did here through hole soldering with pots um, understanding how to replace an output jack but not only that diving into the concept of what soldering is so that when you sit down you can visualize what it is if you take this course and if you use good stuff good solder and a good soldering iron your solder joints will go that quick because everybody in the comments of these videos is like, man, you make that look so easy. It is easy if you understand uh, the fundamentals of how it works and what it is and uh, use good stuff. Not expensive stuff, just good stuff. I'll leave a link, obviously, to the soldering course in the description of the video. I will also leave a link to all of the tools that I used here because you'll see they're not expensive, but they are quality enough to get the job done and get it done reliably. And most importantly, take the frustration out of this for you. I We get calls all the time. People, uh, or emails and comments on your videos, people really get frustrated with this task of soldering. And it is just not that hard if you know a few basic things. I think next week, a couple of expansions. So what you see in the soldering course now 
is not even the whole thing. We're actually going to be adding a couple of expansions to it. Now, real quick before I go, for those of you that have seen our soldering course before, this is the same one. We've moved platforms to a new platform because I did not like how you had to have a monthly membership to the previous platform in order to view the content. That bugged me because I don't want people to have to spend $15 a month forever to have access to that content. Uh, so it's a little bit different now. It's a one-time purchase thing, and now you own the content, number one. And number two, we have a bunch of stuff lined up. How to make pickups, how to wire stuff, um, all kinds of stuff. Uh, how to set up your guitar. We have a bunch of stuff in the works right now, but this is the first one that we're launching on Teachable. So if you've seen it before and you don't feel like you need it again, I understand that. Don't worry about it. But if this is new to you and you want to go check it out, the link will be below to our website where you can go to the front page, click it, and there you go. Thanks for hanging out. And uh, I guess we'll see you tomorrow for our live stream. I'm actually going to be in Nashville, Tennessee for that. And we will see you in the next video.